Okay, we're back live. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's coverage of the Dell Storage Forum. This is our second year at the Dell Storage Forum, and we'd like to bring you the top executives. We had Darren Thomas earlier. We have a number of customers on. University of Wisconsin was on. And we also love to bring in the analyst community to bring an independent perspective on what we're hearing at the shows. And we're here with George Crump, who is the founder of Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is a consultancy. Uh, George is a, an analyst, a blogger, a very uh, uh, pro prolific writer. George, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me, Dave, appreciate uh, it. It was really a pleasure. I pr appreciate you taking the, the time here. We're at the Dell Storage Forum. Now, were you at the Orlando event last year? Yeah, sure was. You were, mm -hmm. okay, so yeah. the second year. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's a step up from, from last year. I think they're moving in the right direction. Yeah, abso yeah I, oh, absolutely, I think so. I think, you know, the message that I'm s slowly getting from Dell is, hey, we're really serious about storage, right? To, last year was sort of, Okay, yeah, you guys are maybe paying attention to storage, starting to get it now, they're serious, right? Yeah, I agree, I mean, I, the, Dell is clearly relevant mm -hmm. in storage, there's no question about it, and, they, and of course they're competing with a lot of larger companies, we're going to talk about that, and mm -hmm. you know, just to, you have a good line of sight on what's happening in the competitive world, but, um, but the transformation of Dell has been very interesting to watch, I mean, Dell basically was a reseller of other people's technologies, we all know that, Scott McNeely, um, in his unique way, one time said to me, Dell's idea of innovation is the new form of W on the keyboard. You know, <laughs> tell Michael Dell I said that. You know, <laughs> he would always bust balls around that. But right. Dell is really geared up to bring its own IP. And of course, the message they're giving to, to us and the customers is, it's customers first, that we're doing it because that old legacy stuff, euphemism for Clarion, right. is outdated and hard to use, and that's why we went out and bought these new assets. And um, but the reality is, is there's another side to that coin, which is the impact that it has on Dell's business. And Michael Dell is architecting the transformation of Dell. It's a higher margin business, obviously, in storage. And Dell mm -hmm. could be dangerous, don't you think? I mean, they're, yeah. they're used to living in PC margins, and right. now they're playing in storage. It's like heaven for them. Well, I think there's two things. I think th there's clearly that, and I think also because they've been so focused on that mid-market, and they really pay attention to simplification and making things easy. Well, the last time I checked, enterprises don't mind easy stuff either, right? And so, uh, you know, th so that, I think, is going to play well in the enterprise, right? I th what we see a lot of times is enterprise guys buying mid-market market solutions, specifically because it's more cost effective or easier to use or whatever the case may be. A lot of companies, that I feel like, were forced into easy, you know, making things easier, and some of them, you know, arguably bolted on easy. Um, Dell had the advantage, I guess, of starting with a blank sheet of paper and it could acquire companies like Equalogic and, and Compellent, whose, you know, raison d'etre was to simplify IT. Right, I mean, both those guys, right, the, their, their whole go-to-market was easy, 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 right? I mean, I, I was convinced when the the, I remember when the Ecologic guys first started going to market and the four sales guys would walk around with the, the Ecologic box and plug it in at customer sites. I mean, and it worked. And of course, back then, if you could plug in a SAN and it actually worked, that was a sale, right? It's, and it's harder to make easy happen when you got, obviously, a big legacy install base. But what a lot of companies have done is you take, take for example, IBM. They went out and bought XIV. Right. Um, HP buys 3PAR, uh, EMC buys Isilon, I guess that's not wasn't so much of an easy play, but for instance, they, they develop uh, VNXE. Mm -hmm. So they just create a whole new product line. Um, so it seems to me that you got four or five companies that are really viable in the space. Dell's obviously one of them, but what do you, what do you make of the, uh, the storage landscape these days? Well, you know, I, I think that's a, a good way to, to really sum it up. I think what we see is um, is what I like to look at is, is how are people are doing with acquisitions? Because for these bigger companies, their, their growth is going to always come around, or a lot of it's going to come from acquisitions, right? And I and and I Dell and, and to to a large extent EMC, um, both really uh, execute well on buying two types of companies. Uh, Dell buys pretty mature companies, and and in, and in that area, you just kind of don't want to break it, right? You just want to put it into your existing engine and accelerate growth and maybe later on do some integration work, things like that. Compellent, right? you're saying, would be an example. Yeah, Compellent, Equalogic, clearly, yeah. right? Um, and then I think there's the sort of the guys that I call you have to incubate some, and that takes patience. And, and interestingly, I think we've really seen that with Dell, right? With the uh, Exanet technology and the Ocarina technology. I mean, Aperture, I think, would I would throw more into the more mature area. But uh, that, those are good acquisitions that I think they've made. Yeah, and, and, and I guess you're right. I mean, the EMC's been a good, solid acquirer of companies. I mean, mm -hmm. actually a great acquirer of right. companies. Right, yeah. You're throwing VMware into that mix. And, and some of the others in the storage business have been, um, 
had mixed track records. Why do you think Dell is, is so good at it? Hey, you know, I'll tell you that this is totally off. This is no analyst input, but I think that because Michael Dell is still so heavily involved in the mix, that it's still very much his company, right? He's still the namesake and everything, where at other companies, it's it's more classically other people's money, right? And so they don't, I don't know if they put as much thought into it. It's not as personal as it may be to Dell. That I, 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 my sense is, and they certainly would never, I don't confirm this, but my sense is it's just a more personal acquisition for Dell. They take it more of a family sort of deal. You're, you're kind of including somebody in your family. You want to make sure you're, you know, you're going to want to invite them to barbecue and His stuff like that. His name's in the box too, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's a source I, I mean, of that's pride. a big thing, right? That's a good point. You know, it's funny. I, I mean, I've watched and been around for a while and, and you've seen transitions in the industry. I mean, I certainly remember the, as an East Coast person, we're here in Boston, remember the old mini computer days with right. Deck and Prime and Wang and DG and those companies, Apollo, they're gone, right? right. I mean, they were absorbed yeah. or, you know, they're near, near brink of, of death and, you know, someone at the chapter 11, whatever. It seems to me, George, that the, the PC era companies, um, Microsoft, uh, certainly Dell, um, the guys who really made it big during that age, it's like their executives saw the fact that they crushed some of these you know, larger, really well-established mini computer and other companies. And I think they're much more proactive and smarter about, uh, about survival. Right. Um, you know, Dell is a company with, I think, $14 billion of cash in the balance sheet. They've, they've really effectively used it. I remember DG in the day, they had a ton of cash in the bank. They owned a bunch of real estate. They didn't know what to do. Right. They were just like deer in the headlights. Dell is dramatically different. And I would say Microsoft too. How many, how many years have people been gunning at Microsoft? Right, yeah. You know? So, you know, what do you think is up with that? Is it a sort of pride? Have they seen the, 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 the play before? Are they just smarter? I, I, well, I don't know. I think it's. I think that because history is happening in closer cycles, it, it, you're you're more attuned to what happened. I mean, that most of the guys or a lot of the guys in that uh, in the Dell executive team have been around in that mini mini computer era. And they saw that happen, right? And so I think you're right. They you can see the handwriting on the wall that the the PC is not the long term viable viable market that it used to be, right? And I think the the transition now to a bigger uh, you know, more focused uh, sort of storage and server. I think Dell understands that, and I think some of the other guys do too. Yeah, they do, and they've got, they've, many of them have strong VC arms, right? I mean, right. you saw EMC buy Extreme IO, they had an investment right. in the company. Dell today just announced, Dell Ventures, I believe it was Dell Ventures, announced uh, an investment in a company in Ann Arbor, Michigan, that basically made highly efficient motors for scooters, huh. um, which was really amazing, you know, seeing that type of, that's talking about a, a, not even an adjacent market, a total, right. yeah. you know, different play, but but very highly innovative um, uh, uh, move. So you're seeing Dell make, and they've they've tried some other things, like right, Dell TVs and right, right. other consumer electronics didn't work out so great. But so I'm impressed with these companies that uh, that are, you know, putting their telescope on and yeah. really trying to get ahead of the curve. So let's talk storage. Um, okay. What are the big mega trends that you're, that Storage Switzerland is, is following in storage? And what are some of your favorite things that well, you're watching? Well, uh, clearly flash, right? SSD flash is, is, is big. Um, the other thing, I, you know, maybe not so much a trend, but the other trend that we're seeing uh, just from analytics off of our site and things like that is the, the basics, right? There are times where we just sort of assume that everybody knows what an IOP is and everybody knows what bandwidth is. And you know, the number three ranked article on our site right now is what, a, what are IOPs? Well, what does that mean? Well, it probably means we got a whole bunch of people graduating and they're hearing this term IOPs and they're, what does that mean? And they're, they're probably Googling that term exactly, right? So I, th I see two trends. We've got a, a whole new crew, group of IT people coming into the market that they're just hearing these terms and they're just being forced to assume that they should know what they mean, right? And then, then the more kind of um, elaborate stuff like Flash, like uh, Cloud, uh, you know, those sort of things are all becoming uh, pretty big. So that ladder, that what, what is IOPS, so Google what is IOPS, see where Storage Switzerland's article comes <laughs> up, it'll be interesting to see. But so that ladder trend, I think bodes really well for Dell, which right. is really targeted at the IT generalist. Right, right absolutely, yeah, I, and you know, I was on a, I, I, I probably shouldn't say who, but I was on a briefing call and they were announcing a new PCIe card that could do a million IOPS uh, a second, and, and I didn't say anything. And, the, and there was this sort of long, uncomfortable pause, and the guy goes, well, isn't that impressive? I thought, yes, sure it is, it's impressive. I, but nobody knows what that is. What, what does that mean to the guy? Does that mean he can go home at four o'clock instead of five o'clock now? What does that mean? Does he make, make more money for yeah. his company? What, you, what does they don't it mean? know what a million, and, and can, can you, 
does that could you really take advantage of a million IOPS even if you had it right it'd, it'd be like if we increased the speed limit to 200 miles an hour well if the car off all the traffic's going 20 miles an hour because it's rush hour it doesn't really matter right don't you think um, that I'm gonna make a statement tell me if you agree disagree that, okay. that historically the storage industry has done a really crappy job of selling business value they've done a good job of selling to storage admins mm -hmm. features and and functions but not really appealing to the to the business advocate. Right. Do you agree with uh, that? Oh, 100%. In fact, I think that is the key reason why you see so many flash startups uh, instead of uh, the, the, the manufacturers clearly have all brought flash to market, but they've all kind of hinted that it's not going as well as they thought it was. But the flash startups are doing pretty good and because those guys understand that they need to communicate business value where uh, the, the the more traditional manufacturer is really still in that sort of IOPS, speeds, feeds, you know, those sort of things, right? And when you're selling that's something that's 15 times more expensive, you got to you got to be able to explain to somebody why you'd want to pay that, right? Yeah, so um, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, it seems to me that Flash has the potential to really have huge business impacts. Oh, yeah? Productivity, you know, if you measure even something as, you know, revenue per employee or something like that, it seems like Flash and the development of new applications really could um, change a lot of the, the way in which companies transact business. So and you, you're seeing bits and pieces of that, I guess, today with like a Fusion IO, and you see you know, the activities they have at Facebook and, and Apple, and right. maybe some of the other you know, database intensive applications. Um, my question to you is, we saw as part of the recent history of storage virtualization with Equalogic and Left Hand and Compellent and 3PAR and Isilon, and I guess I'd throw data domain in that mix, one of the greatest wealth creations and storage that I've ever seen. Do you think Flash will be a repeat of that? Do you think it'll be bigger than that? I, I think it'll be bigger. I, I think that, um, that all, all, most of the storage companies are going to have to look at their existing portfolio and say, we can't do it like we used to. It's going to require different types of architectures and things like that. And so, yeah, I think that these other companies that are sort of the, the, the next wave, if you will, right, I, I think that there's going to be some massive uh, wealth creation. There. People are very, uh, the people being the, the traditional storage companies are very conservative or, or careful mm -hmm. about, you know, sensitive to the notion that, that, that flash will replace spinning disk. Right. Um, there is a line of thinking though that basically says that all active data will be unflashed. Do you believe that? Yeah, I, I, in fact, I, um, uh, I, I made a proposal once to do a presentation that um, at the end, in, in five years there'll be two types of storage, flash and tape. Right, and you do, would never use those two in a sentence, but if you kind of map out the long-term <laughs> coordinates on both of those technologies, they're the only things that can get faster, right? And uh, hard disk is sort of stuck where it is, right? Now, there'll still be some hard disk, but uh, you could see a world that is mostly flash, a little bit of hard disk, and then a lot of tape. Yeah, so uh, I say, the, the, there's a great, as you know, the great sensitivity of the vendor community when you'd say that. They say, no, no, there's a place, uh, uh, and they right. sort of craft their messaging, but. It's just, if all active data is going to be on flash, well, where's active data live today? It lives right. on spinning disks, so. Right, well, uh, but I think that the funny thing is is that I think that like technologies like uh, what uh, um, Dell talks about with their fluid data still are going to apply in flash, because I think we're going to have levels or tiers of memory-based storage, right? We're not going to, we'll have a, you know, a simple example today would maybe be MLC, SLC, and um, you know, 3-bit uh, or, or TLC. Uh, but it, it, when, as we get into the next types of memory, we might have a mix of that plus, uh, you know, plus the MLCs and SLCs. People say that people in the enterprise space say that uh, if we had to pick a technology to uh, essentially be a persistent technology that we would use in the enterprise, we never would have picked Flash because all the gymnastics that we have to go through, you know, to, <laughs> to protect the data, make right. sure you know, deal, deal with wear leveling and, and, yeah. and make it reliable. Um, at the same time, the reason why Flash is where it is is not because somebody in the enterprise picked it, it's because of uh, Apple. Right, <laughs> you know? absolutely. So, yeah. um, so there's the, my question is there's a lot of discussion about, um, there's, there's some negative friction in the enterprise about Flash because it's, it's maybe not the, the, the most enterprise ready technology, but people have dealt with that. Uh, and there's some, a lot of discussion about follow on technologies, memory store from HP, for example, and others, you know, a lot of stuff in the labs. Um, What's your take on that? Uh, do, will those technologies be able to compete from an economic standpoint, or is it really going to be the consumer market that drives the market? Well, that's a tough call. I, I, I think that the, the uh, investment and the, just the production around Flash is so big 
that I, I don't know if anything else will be able to overcome it, you know, near term, say within the next five to ten years even. Uh, I, I, I just think there's just so much invested in there. Uh, I mean, clearly as we get small little lithographies and things like that, uh, you know, the, the flash technology becomes increasingly challenging. But as you start to look at environments that are, that are entirely flash-based, well, you know, EMC's acquisition and some of the other guys that are out there, it, it, that changes the game because the if you think about how we're using flash today, it's sort of the worst way to use it where we're caching stuff, it's up there for a little bit, and then we're pulling it back off and we're putting more stuff on it, and so we have this huge turnover rate. Well, the, the last thing we really want to do is do a lot of writing to flash, right? Well, if, the, if it's all flash, then you don't have that turnover, right? So I think that as that use case evolves, we'll start to see uh, better reliability. And the other big thing, of course, is as we have enterprise class systems protecting flash, if we have a, a failed flash module, it's not that big of a deal, it's no more big of a problem than a flash hard drive. Uh, so, so if you take that sort of predominantly flash or you know all flash scenario, um, it, and we've talked about this a lot, obviously, uh, the, the importance of software. Right. to manage that whole hierarchy. Do you see it as a one-way trip to Bitbucket? In other words, we've got the data in the flash, okay, and once we're done with it, it's going to go back to the Bitbucket and probably live there for, forever. Maybe we pull it in every now and then. Yeah, I, I would say that that's probably the typical scenario. I, I think on software, though, I think that the, um, the zero latency or the low latency of, of memory-based technology also changes software because now you know the, the software that we ha we've had from all the major manufacturers really changes because th they, they were counting on latency in the hard drive, right? I, I can remember when, and, and I think it was NetApp really would talk about, well, we got to figure out ways to use more of the uh, storage controller processor because it's sitting there doing nothing most of the time. Well, you know, in a heavy flash environment, that's not going to be the case anymore. And so all of a sudden, the software becomes a bottleneck. And so they're going to have to become more efficient at software code. Yeah, so we had Polly Nist on theCUBE. Uh, we've had her on a couple of times. We had her on HP Discover, had her on our Oracle Open World a um, year or so ago. And she used the term, the horrible storage stack. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's stuck in my mind, and what she's talking about is not just the spinning nature, but also if you think of you know, just even something like the SCSI protocol, the right. overheads associated with that. And I'm, I'm very much intrigued by what Fusion IO has done with mm -hmm. its VSL technology, being able to essentially do atomic writes. Um, what's your take on that? Is it really a differentiator? Is it something that Intel is going to, you know, going to ultimately you know, develop and, and compete very effectively with them? Are there other entrants there? Or does Fusion IO really have a significant lead in your opinion? Well, I'll tell you, it depends on how well they can get the community, the development community to embrace that stack, right? If they do, uh, I, I think they have a, a big advantage, right? With the ISV community writing to their API. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, I'll tell you the other angle for that's interesting for like a Fusion IO or, or even for some of the other guys is storage systems that then use them as part of their stuff, right? So instead of going out and buying yet another PCIe thing, I mean, we've seen, I, I can think of two startups that have Fusion I.O. embedded in their storage system as part of their overall strategy, and they're, right, they're leveraging that API set, and they've customized their storage software to take advantage of that, that high PCIe transfer. Are they, are they stealth startups, or are they no, like, no, like uh, a data so, core? Or? Uh, well, but specifically, I was, I was thinking of uh, uh, Nutonix, which is a converged yeah, yeah, play, right. yep, yep. and then also um, uh, NextGen uh, out of, right, of course, out of right. Colorado. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, and then, so you've got the sort of memory extension right. thing going on, and I, Part of me doesn't even see that as, a st as storage, you know? Right, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something new and different that could change, as you say, applications. Um, and then you've got the other end of the spectrum, like a violin memory, you know, right. which is, I, I've, I've called them the data domain of flash, right? You just sort of plug it into the existing infrastructure, mm -hmm. you get huge valuations, they've raised $160 million. What do you right. make of those guys? I, I, again, I mean, they're, they're on a good track. Uh, you know, their, their issue is going to be how well can they transition. They, they've partnered very well with HP. I think that's where they've seen a lot of uh, mm -hmm. traction. I, their, their thing is going to be how well can they come into a, a, a shareable, more of a, uh, a true appliance type of nature without any uh, latency and things like that. So that, those would be the key, uh, key things. I Anybody think. else that you're really, you're watching closely? I mean, I know you're watching everybody closely. Yeah. Really stands I, I, out well in, in I the, know you got to be Switzerland about yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in the flash space, I, I, again, I like the, 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 the all flash plays. I think that they have an interesting, even if uh, people don't use it in that nature just as a kind of a, to handle a specific uh, problem within the environment, I see that. So guys like Pure Storage and Nimble uh, would jump to mind immediately. Uh, Solid Fire again out of Colorado would jump to mind. So I think there's a lot of guys in that space that can do a lot. The other guys that are kind of interesting are the guys that are integrating 
like a cache or an SSD layer and then uh, using sort of SAS or low end nearline SAS on the back end. So uh, just to, you know, drive, so that drives a flash into the SMB space and they're really using it not necessarily to have great performance on the SSD, they're using it to make fit, you know, slow drives go faster. What's Dell have to do, in your opinion, in, in Flash to, to maintain leadership or, or, or grab leadership? Well, I, I think you know, they have a lot of the um, uh, foundational stuff, right? The, the RNA stuff could be big, right? And, and so they have the ability, I, I think in the enterprise class, this move to server side, um, you know, pushing the data closer to the server makes, just makes a lot of sense. It's, it's who's going to have the best technology to, to execute there. Uh, I, I think they've got the, the foundational stuff to do it. I don't think we'll see it until next year, but I don't know if that's necessarily a big deal. I don't think everybody's going to be racing to server-side flash tomorrow, right? right? So I think that's key. I think the other thing is going to be uh, architecture, right? We talked about that earlier, is can they, you know, tweak the ecologic and compelling architectures enough that they can get full SSD bandwidth out of that uh, scenario. What do you think of the Extreme IO acquisition at you know, a reported 430 million, although Rich Napolitano said to me on theCUBE, it wasn't that high. So <laughs> me, I, don't know, I don't know what the number was, but it was big. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, what EMC does a good job of is, is buying the right company at the right time. I mean, I, I, so you almost got to can't argue with whatever they do from that space. Now it, now it really comes down to how well they execute. Because they've, they've had cases where they've executed very, very well, and they've had ex executed when, you know, not so much, right? So, and I'm, to me, the challenge that Extreme IO brings to them is can they execute a high value type of product, right? It goes back to that, what we started with, right? Can you explain why I should pay 15 times more for this than the other thing, right? And if, if they can do that, I think they're in good shape. The difference, though, is where when they bought Equal or <laughs> Equalogic, when they bought um, Isilon and um, uh, Data Domain and those guys, there was, there was a team of people that were able to help their regular sales force with that transition. Yeah, they kind of left them alone in yeah, a way. I mean, exactly. There was, there there's no a, team. I mean, there, there, there's a team at Extreme IO, but they don't have salespeople all around the world, right? And then that's going to be a hard thing to do. Yeah, that all flash array looks like it's going to take on the traditional tier one block based storage right. space, which I, I was very intrigued that they put the Extreme IO acquisition under Rich Napolitano's group in yeah. the mid, mid range, the unified storage group versus Brian Gallagher in the you know, symmetrics group and right. you know, the symmetrics and virtualization group. Why do you think that was? Do you think they're trying to create some internal competition, or was it just a matter of management bandwidth? Or I, I, I you know, I don't know because of, of all the the pure flash stuff that's out there. I, I think the ex, uh, extreme IO could make a case to be a, a real enterprise solution. It had the scalability, it had the, you know the HA stuff. Um, so I, I think it's more that they're still trying to figure out where that group fits in, and and I, and I think that the high end enterprise group within EMC is still treated special, right? And so I, I think they would have to kind of earn their way into that, yeah, so. Cool. All right, George, we're getting the hook here. Uh, okay. I really appreciate it. Uh, if people want more information. Uh, uh, Storage-Switzerland.com. Great, uh, excellent resource. Uh, it's all open, free. Yeah, no, you know, no yeah. firewall. Really great to all see right, you. Thanks very thanks much, very for, much for coming appreciate to theCUBE. Keep it right there, we'll be back with more from the Dell Storage Forum live from Boston. This is theCUBE. <laughs>